Hi students, in this session we are going to discuss about the properties of Laplace transform. Okay, so I will give you all the properties of Laplace transform and I will explain the properties. Already you know the properties of Fourier transform and you know how to prove the properties of Fourier transform because I had proved some of the properties and you also did some of the properties proofs. So in this Laplace transform I am not going for the proofs because already you know the proof of Fourier transform. The proof of this uh, Laplace transform properties are similar to the proof of uh, Fourier transform properties. Hence in this session I will explain the uh, properties of Laplace transform and you have to prove these properties that is for your work. Okay. Now first property linearity property. So linearity property you have to take two signals that is x1 of t and x2 of t. If x1 of t is having a Laplace transform x1 of s and x2 of t is having a Laplace transform x2 of s then linearity property states that a into x1 of t plus b into x2 of t will have a Laplace transform a into x1 of s plus b into x2 of s linearity. So the change is what that takes place in input the same changes will take place at output simple a into x1 of t plus b into x2 of t we have a into x1 of s plus b into x2 of s okay next time scaling property time scaling so i have to multiply a constant to the time that is if x of t is having a laplace transform x of s then x of a t time scaling will have a laplace transform 1 by mod a into x of s by a 1 by mod a into x of s by a third one time reversal property this is a simple one if x of t is having a laplace transform x of s then x of minus t time reversal x of minus t will have a laplace transform x of minus s and the fourth one time differentiation property time differentiation okay if x of t is having a laplace transform x of s then differentiation of time that is d by dt of x of t d by dt of x of t will have a laplace transform s into x of s minus x of 0 minus s into x of s minus x of 0 so negative just just the sign of 0 okay just the starting of that 0 that is 0 initiated with the is minus suffix okay the top of the 0 I will place a 0 minus or if you are not able to remember this one okay you can remember like this d by dt into x of t will have a Laplace transform s into x of s s into x of s minus x of 0 simply okay so this is time differentiation that is differentiation in x of t will go for multiply s into x of s time integration time integration means if x of t is having a Laplace transform x of s then integral minus into t x of tau d tau x of tau d tau we have a Laplace transform x of s by s plus integral minus infinity to 0 x of tau d tau by s so here if you are not able to remember this at least remember this one that is integral minus infinity to t x of tau d tau we have a Laplace transform x of s by s simply integral x of t dt will have a Laplace transform x of s by s in a simple manner if you want to remember it perfectly so this is the perfect expression okay now so this perfect expression is helpful while you go in for the proofs hence i am giving a perfect expression for a time differentiation and time integration properties okay and the next one is differentiation in s domain differentiation in s domain s domain that is the laplace transform the function will be differentiated with respect to s so if x of t is having a laplace transform x of s then t into x of t then t into x of t will have a laplace transform minus d by ds of x of s that is t will be multiplied to x of t in the time domain so if x of t is having a laplace transform x of s then t into x of t will have a laplace transform minus d by ds of x of s this is differentiation in s domain this is the time differentiation that is in time domain here the differentiation is in s domain both are different okay now go for the frequency shifting property frequency shifting property if x of t is having a laplace transform x of s then then frequency shifting that is the shifting has to take place in this one in s so e power minus a t into x of t will have a laplace transform x of s plus a e power minus a t into x of t will have a laplace transform x of s plus a a that is the frequency shifting mode. I already did some problems regarding with this one also. Now, next one time convolution property. So, you all know the convolution in time domain will go for the multiplication of their respect to transforms in frequency domain. 
simple if x1 of t is having laplace transform x1 of s and x2 of t is having laplace transform x2 of s then x1 of t convolution x2 of t will have a laplace transform x1 of s into x2 of s that is a multiplication of the respect to laplace transform in s domain in s domain so convolution converts to multiplication while moving from one domain to another domain so if in time domain it is multiplication in s domain it will be multiplication in time domain if it is convolution in s domain it will be multiplication vice versa see next one multiplication property if x1 of t is having laplace transform x1 of s and x2 of t is having laplace transform x2 of s then x1 of t into x2 of t that is where the multiplication in time domain then what happens in s domain we go for the convolution that is the laplace transforms convolution of laplace transform of the individual one that is x1 of s convolution x2 of s besides this we have 1 by 2 pi j so x1 of t into x2 of t will have a laplace transform 1 by 2 pi j into x1 of s convolution x2 of s x1 of s convolution x2 of s okay so for this only one thing the multiplication in one domain changes to convolution in other domain a convolution of one domain changes to multiplication in other domain so that based on this we have these two properties next conjugate and conjugate symmetry property conjugate and conjugate symmetry property if x of t is having a laplace transform x of s then x star of t will have a laplace transform x star of s star for complex x of t that is x of t is complex x of t is complex then we go for the complex conjugate x star of t will have a laplace transform x star of t of s star okay now the conjugate symmetry property this is the conjugate property and the conjugate symmetry property states that conjugate symmetry property states that x of capital s that is x of s laplace transform will be equal to x star of s star for real x of t so for real x of t x of s will be equal to x star of s star so this is with respect to conjugate symmetry and this is with respect to conjugate so this is nothing but conjugate and conjugate symmetry properties already explain all these properties while i am explaining the fourier transforms and i did some of the proofs for i did the proofs for some of the properties okay so for that reason i quickly explained all these properties and you already know this just uh, this is uh, similar to the fourier transform hence i had given a brief review okay now you have to go for the proofs of these properties so along with this there are two important properties hence i had written it side so in laplace transform we have two important properties or two important theorems okay that is different from fourier transform here in laplace transform we have very very two important theorems for properties since i left with the two at the end so those are initial value theorem and final value theorem so remember these formulas very much because based on these problem formulas you will get problems also so they will ask you to find the initial value and they will ask you to find the final value just by using this formula you can find the initial value and final value you can also prove this also okay firstly mainly remember this theorems initial value theorem if x1 of t is having laplace transform x of s then initial value theorem states that initial value theorem states that if x of t is having laplace transform x of s the initial value theorem states that limit t tends to infinity x of t limit t tends to infinity x of t tends to 0 limit t tends to 0 not infinity then limit t tends to 0 x of t limit t tends to 0 x of t what happens if i substitute 0 here then will become x of 0 that is x of 0 will be equal to limit s tends to infinity s into x of s so simply whenever we need the initial value that is x of 0 we simply get by limit s tends to infinity s into x of s s into x of s so if you know the value of uh, laplace transform of that function x of s then i can get the initial value of that by using this formula so here the initial value is that if x of t is having laplace transform capital x of s then limit t tends to 0 x of t will be equal to x of 0 that x of 0 is equal to limit s tends to infinity s into x of s a simple reverse version which for final value theorem see the final value theorem so in final value theorem if x of t is having a laplace transform x of s then and the final value final value is infinity so limit t tends to infinity x of t which is nothing but x of infinity which is equal to limit s tends to 0 s into x of s s tends to 0 s into x of s so if you want x of infinity what i have to do limit s tends to 0 s into x of s so if i know the laplace transform x of s then i can get the 
initial value and a final value using this initial value and final value theorems or initial value and final value properties using these two i can get the initial values and final values okay when you know the x of s so based on this formulas we can give the problems also okay so this is regarding initial value theorem and final value theorem very two important theorem for two important properties in laplace transform so so i'm specifying means you have to remember this surely okay and next we have left with two topics that is constraints on roc for various class of signals already i explained this concept while explaining the properties of roc properties of region of convergence i explained the concept of constraints on roc for various class of signals so here were classes that is right sided signals right sided signals left sided signals two sided signals finite duration signals finite duration signals so i already explained all this for right sided signals what will be the roc and how the roc will be for left sided signals what will be the roc and how the roc will be and the same way if there are two sided signals what will be the roc and how the roc will be okay so for right sided signals the roc will be right sided and left sided signals roc will be the left side and two sided the roc will be the combination that is intersection of both okay combination and finite duration it will be complete complete plane okay so i already explained this constraints of roc for various class of signals while explaining the properties of roc and the concept of roc region of convergence there i explained this and the last one is finding the laplace transform of certain signals using waveform synthesis using waveform synthesis they will give certain signals by using the waveform synthesis we have to find out the laplace transform that means they will give like this they will give this a signal this signal so we have to find out the laplace transform of this first we have to write this in the equation format so this can be written with the help of unit step function and unit ramp function you all know so unit step function u of t so if it is 0 t 2 t 3 t so from 0 to t it is like unit step function from t to 2 t it is 0 and from 2 to 3 t it is again step so here we have to write step function using delayed delayed so here i write u of t minus 2t starts from here u of t u of t means it starts up to goes this one okay and then there is no signal so for this given waveform you have to go for the equation like uh, using step function or ramp function there are some other signals like this one there is this one you have to use the ramp function there or uh, the signals are like this the signal is like this so you have to use the combination of ramp and unit uh, step function so first the given signal will be converted into the equation of unit step functions or ramp functions are completed into unit step functions from that already you know the laplace transform of a unit step function okay you know the laplace transform of unit step function and you know the laplace transform of ramp function so using that you can easily get the values that is you can get the laplace transform of this signals by waveform synthesis this is nothing but laplace transform certain signals using waveform synthesis so in this first they will give a signal diagram from that you have to go for writing the equation in the form in terms of unit step function or ramp function already you can write the ramp also in unit that is r of t equal to t into u of t that is you have to convert the signal into unit step function and you know the laplace transform of that unit step function so using that you can find out the laplace transform also so here unit step it is delayed delayed version of unit step delayed version of unit step in the same way ramp if there is another ramp delayed version of ramp so based on that you can write the equation so this method is very easy method so you can practice it you can do it if you have any doubts you can ask me okay this is completely about laplace transform so i covered all the concepts of laplace transform this we finished laplace transform concepts okay thank you thank you one and all